Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to DIY Crafts, sponsored by our wonderful sponsors over here. Uh, so today we are doing wine bottle hummingbird feeders. So you might ask why? Because with all of the rain, believe it or not, some, not all flowers, are losing their nectar. The rain is literally washing away the food supply for all of these hummingbirds. And also because who doesn't want hummingbirds coming to their house to enjoy their feeder day in, day out, because they're beautiful birds. So today we are going to take a plain Jane wine bottle or some other type of bottle of your choice. And then you can buy these fancy hummingbird feeder nozzles. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, these are the ones that I already had. So I've done a little experimentation. If you put this in the bottle, that's it, done, craft over. Just kidding. <laughs> so we have to figure out a way to do two things. One, this bottle is really ugly and we want to bedazzle it. So I have a bunch of paint pens with me so we can color beautiful flowers on there, make it super colorful. The more colorful it is, the more likely you're gonna get the hummingbirds to your house. Hummingbirds like color. Flowers are full of color. So we need to attract the hummingbirds like a flower attracts the hummingbirds. And this just plain Jane green bottle is not gonna cut it. Granted, the tip of this is red, it's just not enough color. So we need to bedazzle this. The second thing we need to figure out how to do is how do we hang this bottle? So I have a couple of different ways that I'm gonna show you guys how to do. And then the third thing that we're gonna need to do is hummingbirds like to perch when they feed. So this tiny little knot, um, hole right here for them to put their beak in, there's nowhere for them to perch. So we wanna figure out a way to let them sit so they can drink the sugar water out of this successfully. So first things first, we're going to put the wine bottle off to the side and we're gonna figure out a way to add a perch to this so the hummingbirds can sit on here and drink out of the nozzle here to get their feed. So my suggestion is to make a really pretty bright red flower out of wire and then what they're gonna end up doing is they'll sit on any one of these petals and then they can drink the nectar out of this um, nozzle. Also note that the wire I'm using is really bright. It's a bright red color with a bright green center. Um, and once again, hummingbirds are very much attracted to bright colors and flowers. So if you have um, copper wire, wire would work really well because it's very bright. Um, any type of colored wire will also work. So let's talk about how to make a wire flower. I have wire right here, it's the red, red wire. Um, I'm not sure the gauge on this, but in all honesty, any gauge will work. Um, even the thicker, the better, because it makes it a lot easier to work with and shape. Um, and then you don't actually have to do too, too much. You could just make a little curly cue and that could be what they sit on. So we're gonna make something cool though. We're gonna do a flower. So I have here a highlighter and I have my wire. And all I'm gonna do, let me get really close to you guys so you guys can see this. I'm gonna wrap the wire around the um, highlighter like this, just to give it that round petal shape right there. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it to do my next petal. So once again, I'm gonna wrap it around the highlighter. And then I'm just gonna pull it to a um, whatever size this petal is. So I wanna try and keep them kind of consistent here. So now I have two petals and now my wire's down here. So I'm gonna bend this back up right here. And then I'm gonna hook my highlighter in, just keep that round petal look. Here we go. And it, all the highlighter's doing is it's helping me make that rounded edge. And then I can make it either bigger or smaller depending on how big I want my petal to be. So. I'm gonna spread it out a little. So right now I have three petals, just like this. I'm gonna curve this up. 
And then I'm going to round it again. So I'm just going to use that highlighter to hook it around. And then just like that. All it's doing is, all the highlighter is doing is like helping me make that round edge. And I'm going to hook it right back. So I might make, need to make it a little bigger or a little smaller, depending on how many petals you want. So right now I have four petals. I can kind of squish this one together a little bit more. And then I'm going to hook it back up one more time. I'm just going to take the wire. So right now I have one, two, three, four. I'm going to go for one more petal right here. And this one I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to bend it the opposite direction, but I'm still using the highlighter to bend and again highlighter is just helping me make that round edge and then I can adjust to the height that I want it to be and so it kind of makes this crazy um, figure right here so now you want to figure out a way to keep it together and the way that I've discovered that works really really well is don't worry about shaping it too too much right now because you're going to take additional wire and wrap it in between these to pull all your petals together. So I'm going to leave this right here so you guys can see it. So I have really thick wire here which is kind of difficult to work with but if you use the thicker wire you can kind of put it into a spiral in the center here and then loop it around. But what I found that works a little bit better is if you use slightly thinner wire, this gauge is smaller than this one. I'm going to take a piece probably about six inches long, give or take. I'm going to use my wire cutters to cut a piece about yay big. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to weave it in and out of the center here to create some kind of center um, piece. So I'm going to just do this first one for a second here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So just weaving through that center right there. And I'm just going to overlap it. This wire is super easy to use because it's so thin. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep wrapping it around and go through a petal and wrap it around and go through a different petal and I'm just going to keep wrapping it until I go through as many petals as possible and try and get that shape to really kind of be where I need it to be. So I'm basically creating the center of the flower if you will and what this is doing too is it's kind of pulling all those petals together. And also, it's adding a little bit more color to my flower. So see, just like that. It doesn't have to be super pretty. All it's doing is keeping it together. So let me go through here, go through here. And then when you end, you're just gonna tuck the wire in, in here somewhere. So now that you have your flower, you can kind of mess with it and mess with the shape a little. So I'm going to open this petal up a little. I'm going to open this petal up a little. And all I'm doing is pulling the petal apart like this to give it that shape. I'm going to put this little tiny piece back in here. So you can pull them apart as far as you want. You can kind of readjust where they are, something like that. So that's the flower. Your other option, if you don't like the curved edges of the flower, you can take the very edge of the flower, the very tip of the flower petal, excuse me, and just squish them like this. And then once you have them squished, you're just going to pull them back apart. And that's going to give it more of that. Right now it looks kind of like a poinsettia. <laughs> so if you don't like the rounded edges of the flower, you can have pointed edges. Pointed edges, rounded edges, totally up to you. So I didn't cut the very edge of this yet, the end of this yet, because I want to see how much space I need to make this be the landing 
for my hummingbirds to sit on or the little perch. So now all you gotta do is wrap this wire around your um, hummingbird feeder nozzle. So what I like to do, so I like to set about where I want it. I want it to be about there. Hummingbirds aren't really that big, so I'm not leaving too, too much space. And I think that's probably a pretty good spot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around here. I'm gonna wrap it around here. I don't wanna wrap around here because this part goes into the bottle. I just wanna wrap underneath here. And then once I have that pretty good, I'm going to cut all the excess. And then I can readjust. Oops, sorry guys. Alright, so this is the base that I needed at. I'm going to take this down a little. And all I'm going to do is make sure it's at that right level. And I'm just going to wrap it. Okay, and then what's going to happen is you just want to make sure that this is nice and tight around the bottom of the feeder and it's not going to move too, too much. Just like that. And then what you can do is you can just leave it exactly like this, but what I like to do is I like to curve the petals up a little. You can just take one individual at a time or you can kind of take a bunch of them and just push them up. And what that does is it gives um, the hummingbirds different levels to sit on. So they can perch here, they can perch on any one of these petals depending on how big they are. The babies are a little bit smaller than the adults as per usual and this will allow for that variety here. And then all that's going to happen is you're going to put this in the hummingbird feeder and then they're going to sit on this floral um, wire that you just created and that gives them somewhere to perch. From my experience, hanging these hummingbird feeders, this is the way to get them to sit on them, is um, to have that perch for them. And if you find that this is kind of shaking around a little, just wrap your wire around the nozzle here a little bit better and kind of tighten it. And that'll keep it from moving around. All right, so we have our flowers, we have our little perch for the hummingbirds. Now what? Well, so now the issue is, how are we going to hang this bottle? Because right now, there's nothing to hang the bottle with. So, of course, you can go to your hardware store and buy a um, hose clamp and a stand and some nuts and bolts and all that jazz and kind of screw into a wall and put it there. I don't want to do that. So, again, I have wire. I have this red wire right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna start wrapping this around my bottle here. So we can do this with just the nozzle right here. And all I'm gonna do is wrap it and tie it really tight in that very first groove. And I'm gonna hang this piece down here. And then, with this nice and tight, I'm just gonna wrap it around the bottle like this. And this piece right here that I left hanging, I'm going to add a little floral, um, a little curly crew, a little embellishment here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this by just taking my needle nose pliers and twisting this like so. And what that does is it creates a nice little curly cue right here. Um, and then you can use your needle nose pliers to adjust it and then use your hand to kind of mold it to the bottle to add that little flare. I already did one down here, same method. I'm just curling it with the pliers and I'm just gonna keep spinning this until I have this where I want it. So right now it's right there, that's pretty good. And then I can grab a, another wire and I'm gonna go from either side of this. So what I wanna do is I'm going to put a little hook on this side. So if any of you have ever attended the jewelry program here, this is very similar to what we do at jewelry. Um, there's a lot of bending, there's a lot of using the needle nose pliers. So I'm going to create a little hook just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and hook the bottom of this, so like this. 
And then I want to bring this around. So I'm going to flatten this. And you don't have to get this crazy. You can just wrap it with wire. But I figured, why not? Let's have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to hook this. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. And I want to create another hook, like the hook I just did right here, but on this side of the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit past where I want to hook. I want to hook here. So I'm going to go a little bit past. I'm going to cut the wire. A little bit past, cut the wire. Tilt you guys down a little. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this wire again. So I'm just going to make another little loop. Just like that. Another little loop. And I'm going to hook it through my little thing over here. There we go. Put you guys back up. So now that I have this now that I have this <laughs> hooked, I'm just going to pull it down a little and I'm going to tighten up my hook so that it's not leaving. So I'm going to tighten this hook up right here, tighten this hook up right here just by squeezing the wire shut, just like that. And now all I need that this is nice and tight. So I can wrap this around a little bit more. I can loop this a little bit more. This is going to be my tightening mechanism. So if I want to tighten this, all I have to do is spin this little piece here. So for instance, let me show you guys. Right now it's a little bit too loose, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tighten this loop up a little. And then I'm just going to readjust it so you guys can still see my little curly cue with my fingers. Just like that, little embellishment. And now all you need to do is you can either grab a chain or you can grab another piece of wire. And what this is going to do is it's going to let it have a little hook. So for instance, let's put this on the table for a second. If I wanted to add a little hook right here, this would do just fine. And all I'm going to do is twist this together. Twist, twist, twist my little hook and then I could hang this anywhere just like this I kind of want it on an angle right here you see guys I want it on a little bit of an angle so that the it flows nicely um, you can see that this is still too loose because it's coming off the end here so what needs to happen is this all just needs to get made tighter so the wire can be kind of a pain in the butt because of that but it looks really cool once you have it the way you need it to be. So once you have it where you want it, it'll kind of work. It'll hang nice like this. The other option, I'm just going to take this off real quick. Loosen this up. So I can just take this right off, but the other option, if you're not a fan of wire and you're not liking the wire and you want to keep it really simple, is you can use string. So a couple, um, I think over the summer last year, we did uh, a net bottle, and that's going to work the same way. So I'm going to cut a piece of string after I tie it off here. I'm just going to go ahead and tie this in a knot right here. Just like this nice and tight and then I'm going to trim the excess so just a plain Jane knot trim the excess trim the excess and then I'm going to take strands probably about 18 inches long um, and double them up like so so if I fold it in half it's about 18 inches long and then I'm just going to loop it through here, take the loop end, loop it through, and then loop it through your loop in full. And I'm going to let that hang just like this. Okay? And I'm going to do probably two more of that same height. 
So I want about 18 inches, give or take. And also note that I'm using very, very bright string. And the reason for that is because hummingbirds like bright colors. And I want the hummingbirds to be attracted to my hummingbird feeder. So once again, I'm just going to loop the loop under the um, string that you already tied on the bottle. And then you're going to take the excess and put it through the loop and pull. And that just creates like a slip knot, I think it's called. And I think we'll probably do, we'll do one more. And what this is going to do is this is going to help us create like a net effect. And that's going to be really helpful for um, holding the bottle up the way it should be. So I'm just going to fold this in half. Again, about 18 inches, give or take. Fold it in half. We're going to loop this right under here. So again, if you don't like the string, you can always do wire, but I wanted to show you guys two different ways because the wire can be kind of tricky and the string just looks really pretty as well. All right, so I have three strands. I have one, two, and three. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate each of these double strands. And so for instance, I'm gonna take these two and I'm just gonna tie a knot right here. So just a really plain jean boring knot, just like this. And then I'm going to do the same thing to these. I'm going to take this one and this strand and tie another knot around that same height if I can, keeping it as consistent as possible. This works really well for all shapes and sizes of bottles because it's gonna tighten it as you go and it's gonna create a nice little net look. So same thing, I'll do that here. Tie it around the same height if I can or to the best of my ability. So, if you look at it like this, it also creates a pretty cool design. And then what you can do is you probably need to tie more than just that because that's not gonna hold on very well. So you're just going to keep separating the strands, one strand, one strand, and you're just going to keep tying them together until you get that net look. And that net look is what's going to keep it all together. So when you flip it upside down, it doesn't go anywhere. So let me just do a couple more and we'll see if it works. Otherwise, I'm telling you guys to. Okay. So once again, I'm just taking one strand and one strand, and to the best of my ability, I'm tying it in a knot at the same height as the rest, which I'm kind of rushing it, so I'm not really tying it as best as I should. Just like that, and when you pull it tight, it gets more and more net-like, and then we'll tie this one together to the best of our ability. And flip it upside down and see what happens. Okay, so we have a couple of strands still in the thought that we're gonna have to tie more. Because right now the bottle is super top heavy, bottom heavy rather. So doing this is just not gonna work unless I want to hang it completely upside down. Which works. So the more knots you tie, the more netting it's gonna create. It's gonna create that net look. And then when you get to the bottom, after tying as many knots as you can, you're going to tie it as tight as you can at the top, and then that'll give you your little hanger. And then once again, you just put this in here, and ta-da! So this is what would hang. And it's just got the cool little flower on the bottom. So I'm going to tie a couple more knots because this is clearly not secure enough. And then I'll show you guys how to decorate this because to me it's just still not flowery enough. It's still not exciting enough. Still not crafty enough. How's that? I don't think there's a thing as overdoing it. Okay, one 
there. Tie one here. And we'll tie one here. So we're getting pretty close now. So the net, actually that works really well. So what we can do is we'll put this flat on the table. We'll pull this really, really tight. Hold on. Tie this in a knot. And what you probably would like to do is tie a loop at the top. So if I was tying this tighter, it'd be a lot better. And then there we go. So that's what you would hang, and that's how you'd hang it. Pretty cool, pretty cool. But like I said, I'm not done yet because that's just not as fun. The cool thing about this is this green bottle is really boring and we want to jazz it up a little. So what we're going to do, I have a bucket full of paint pens and a bunch of really fun, exciting colors. Bright colors are the way to go. So I have greens, I have pinks, I have whites, I have yellows, and we want to make an array of flowers on this bottle before we cover it up with wire or anything else. So, put this stuff off to the side, see if we can start off with a nice white color. And I'm gonna go for the daisy. So let's just see, we'll do a loop, another loop, another loop, another loop, another loop. And it's really hard to draw flowers upside down. Let's tilt you guys down so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm basically just drawing using the paint pen. I'm just trying to draw the outline of my flower. And then I'll put a white center in it for now. And then I'm just going to fill it in and I'm going to go back with a different color. So some nice white flowers. like this and then I'll probably do a couple of these so if you don't have paint pens regular pens work uh, regular pens regular paint works fine it doesn't have to be a paint pen I was just using the paint pens because that's what I had on hand and they're not as messy as pouring paint in a plate and doing out these really cute little flowers so I have these two right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cap the white and grab a yellow. And then I'm just gonna put little yellow centers here. Just like that. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. And then the same thing, I'm gonna put a nice little yellow center in here. And so you can do as many of these as you like, as many different flowers as you like. You might even want to do like a Black Eyed Susan. So we'll do a yellow one right here. Just going to create a center. Do a bunch of different loops. Just like this. Maybe a sunflower of some sort. And then all I'm going to do is go back and fill it in with yellow. So. And once I fill it in with yellow, I can go back and add some more details. Um, might use a different shade of yellow to add some veins, some floral attributes, if you will.
So you can draw round flower petals, you can draw pointed flower petals, depending on what you're going for here. So I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit and then I can go back and I can add some more color and some more like um, dimensions. Right now it just looks like a giant yellow blob, which is okay because we're going to fix it. Alright, so I have a giant yellow blob, but like I said we're going to fix it. But we're going to let this dry because I can't really do much with it right now. But the more you add to it, the cooler it's going to look. So from afar, it looks really cool. It looks like I actually almost know what I'm doing. And again, we can add different colors. I'm going to actually take this tannish color and help dazzle my daisies over here. I'm going to make it have a little bit of an outline color. Just like that. And it's just going to make that petal kind of stand out a little bit more. And then the thing to remember is if you're going to put this somewhere where it's going to get wet, because paint pens are not permanent on glass surfaces, when they get wet it'll run, you're going to want to spray it with some type of acrylic spray so it doesn't go anywhere. So... We're going to bedazzle this, we're going to make it look absolutely beautiful, and then once we're done and it's nice and dry, we'll go back and we'll spray it outside with a can of either varnish spray, or I actually prefer just using a nice clear spray paint. It works really well. And again, the more colors you add, the cooler it's going to look, and the more likely you are to get um hummingbirds so that's pretty much it i hope you thoroughly enjoyed this wonderful program i hope you feed the birds and um until next week we will do more fun and exciting crafts if you enjoyed the program and you want to see more or you have suggestions please fill out our survey or leave us a note in the comments or let us know one way or another until next week i will see you all then have a great week